Hi class, a pleasant day to all of you. This is your Professor Dan Dumantay, and in this video, we are going to discuss about retained earnings and dividends. And the particular lesson is about explaining the concept of stock dividend. Okay, let us start. Let us first uh, review the forms of dividends. From previous lessons, we have already learned that the forms of dividends are cash dividend. So this dividend is uh, given in cash. And the next one is property dividend. And this dividend are other assets such as merchandise or shares of stocks acquired from other corporations. So take note class, these shares of stocks are stocks of other corporations, okay? And the third one is liability dividends or script dividend. And the script is a written promise to pay the dividend in cash at a certain future date. So actually, a script dividend is just delaying the payment of cash dividend. Okay? So class, all of these three dividends are to be paid from the assets of the corporation. Okay. Note class that this Three types of dividends are to be declared by the board. The board has the authority to declare this type of dividends. Okay? And the fourth dividend is stock dividends. This is a distribution of the corporation's own stock coming from the unissued shares. So these are the uh, stock certificates of the corporation. And this dividend is to be paid by shares of stocks. Take note, class, that for stock dividend, the board can declare the stock dividend, but it would require approval from two-thirds of the stockholders. Okay? Why do you think there's a need for the approval from stockholders? Because the uh, market, fair market value of the stocks will have, uh, I mean, the declaration of stock dividend will have an implication on the fair market value of the stocks, okay? So there is a need for the board to have affirmation from stockholders, okay? And class, let us uh, take a look of how are we going to uh, handle the declaration of stock dividends. Similarly, there are three significant dates on the declaration of stock dividends. On the date of the declaration, okay, we have to recognize the liability. And here we have to uh, debit uh, retained earnings and credit stock dividends payable. Class, take note, stock dividends payable is also termed as stocks distributable or stock dividends for distribution. Also take note class that stock dividends payable, though it is a payable, it is not a liability account, but an equity account since the obligation to shareholders are shares of stocks and not an asset of the company. Take note class, it is just a movement within the equity side of the accounting equation, okay? And the next one is date of record. The corporation determines who will be entitled to the dividends. There is no entry required on this date. And of course, the date of distribution, the date the dividends are actually distributed to the shareholders. And we will have to prepare this entry. We will debit the stack dividends payable and credit ordinary shares or preference shares, whichever. Um, whichever shares of the stocks will be issued as a dividend. And uh, I would say that in a certain valuation, we also have to credit a share premium, okay? So we will discuss that. So now we are going to discuss valuation of stock dividends. The valuation of stock dividend depends on the kind of stock dividend, if small or large dividend. We can determine if small or large dividend based on the percentage declared as stock dividend. Okay, so for small dividend, 
the number of shares to be issued as dividend is less than 20% of outstanding shares. So class, take note, less than 20%. The valuation is measured based on fair market value of the stocks at declaration date. Okay class, a small dividend, the percentage is less than 20%. And the basis is fair market value. And then the other one, large dividend, the number of shares to be issued as dividend is 20% or more of outstanding shares. The valuation is measured based on par value of the stocks. Take note class, large dividend, 20% or more. Okay, of outstanding shares and valuation based on par value. And the question that you will probably ask, what if it is exactly 20%? Class, take note, this is 20% or more. So if it is exactly 20%, then it falls under large dividend. Okay? So let us have an illustration. This is our problem. The company has the following information on its capital stock. Authorized ordinary shares of 100,000 with par value of 80 it's per share. Like. Issued shares of 50,000 with issue price of 90. Company purchased treasury shares of 2,000 at purchase price of 105. And on the date of declaration of dividend, the share has a fair market value of 100 per share. The balance of retained earnings as of November 30, 20, 2021 is 2,800,000. Class, sometimes it is more complicating that uh, if it is on narrative format. So let us summarize the information. The authorized is 100,000 shares, okay? The par value is 80 per share. The issued uh, number of shares is 50,000, and the issue price is 90 per share. Company purchased treasury shares of 2,000 with a cost of 105 per share. On the declaration of dividend, the share has a fair market value of 100 per share. And the retained earnings is 2,800,000. Class, it is more um, easier for you to look at the information if it is more or less given in, in summarized format. Okay? So let us use this. Let us move on and use this information. Okay. Now, the first case is that the company declared a 15% stack dividend on December 1st, 2021. So, the first thing that we have to do is December 1st is the date of declaration. So, on the date of declaration, we have to recognize the accountability of the company. Okay? So, how are we going to uh, do that? First is that make sure that you know how how many outstanding shares because the basis of dividend is on outstanding shares outstanding shares these are the shares on the hands of stockholders who are entitled to receive the dividend so in this case if we have if the corporation has issued 50000 shares and has a treasury shares of 2,000, then the outstanding shares is 48,000. And now, uh, we have to consider the, now the 15%. So we have 48,000 multiply that uh, 15%, okay? So uh, that will be the number of shares that will be entitled to stock dividends, 48,000 times 15%. But how much will be the value? The valuation will be based at fair market value because it is a small dividend. So fair market value is 100, so we will multiply that. So we will be able to know how much retained earnings that 
uh, we are going to debit. So in this case, on the date of declaration, you will debit retained earnings at 720000 and credit the stack dividends payable or number of shares to be distributed, whichever account that you are going to use. So class, with this 48000 uh, shares times 15% times 100, you will get 720000 Okay, so from the date of record, there's no entry. And on the date of distribution, okay, your entry will be, you will close your stack dividends payable, so you will debit that. So you will issue ordinary shares, which will be uh, determined by 48,000 times 15% and times the par value, okay, which is 80. Okay, and of course, the share premium is the difference between 180, so that's, that would be 20. So the calculation will be 48,000 times 15% times 20, or the difference between the stack dividends payable and the ordinary shares, which is 144,000. Okay, so that is uh, your entry for the 15% stack dividend. So in case two, the company declared 20% stock dividend on December 1st. So on the date of declaration, this is how we are going to compute it. Same, 48%, but at this time, since it is a 20% stock dividend, we will multiply that uh, by 20%. Since that this is a large dividend, our basis, our valuation will be the par value. So this is how are we going to compute this. So our entry will be debit retained earnings, 768000 times stock dividends payable, 768000 How did we get that? We uh, uh, computed it based at 48000 times 20% times 80 par value. Okay? And on the date of record, there is no entry. On the date of the distribution, we are going to debit stock dividends payable and credit ordinary shares at seven hundred sixty-eight thousand. There's of course there is a there is no uh, share premium because the basis of our uh, declaration is the par value. Okay, class. Let us move on. Plus, this is what we have from previous slide. These are the entries on cases one and two, okay, class? And on the date of uh, record, there is no entry. So we just took uh, the entries on the date of declaration and the date of distribution. What am I going to present to you is that what are the implications of the stack dividend in the stockholders' equity? Okay. So on the stockholders' equity, this is the information that you have before stock dividend. Your share capital is four million. Your share premium is five hundred thousand. Your treasury shares is two hundred ten thousand. Then adding all of this, you have four million two hundred ninety thousand, and you and your retained earnings is two million eight hundred thousand, and your stockholders' equity is seven million ninety thousand. So your shares issued in outstanding is 48,000. Where did we get this? If you will go back from previous slide, if you are going to uh, uh, present your stockholders equity using this information, then that is where you will have this before stack dividend. And now the stack dividend is that the entries that you have made Okay, so you have debited retained earnings on the date of declaration. So you have a reduction there of your retained earnings in the amount of 720000 And then you have credited ordinary shares and share premium of 576000 and 144000 respectively. So since uh, your equity has a credit balance, so it is an addition of share capital and share premium. And doing the mathematical cal calculation of this uh, changes by the stack dividend. So you have after stack dividend here with this amount. Take note, 48,000 times 15%, you will have 7,200. 7, it means this is the number of shares that you have issued as stack dividends. Okay, so your issued and stock and outstanding is now at 55,200 shares. Okay, for case two, 
Okay, you have the uh, before stack dividend, of course, they are the same. Then on the stack dividend, uh, the uh, effects of the stack dividend will be there is a reduction of retained earnings of 768000 and then uh, an increase in your capital of 768000 So basically, it was just a movement within the equity part from retained earnings to share capital. And you can take note also on this small uh, dividend from retained earnings to share capital and share premium. And the uh, class doing the mathematical calculation, you have the uh, after stock dividend amounts. And uh, the, the, there is a difference because of the percentage, 20% here. So 20% of 48,000 is 9,600. This is the number of, sh of shares that the company has issued as stock dividends. Okay, class? So that's it. So if you have questions, please let me know. Stay, stay safe, class, and have a great day. Bye.